Normally when I cover text messages, it's about really creepy guys doing unhinged things to women through texts or videos, whatever. Today is a little different. This is only like the second time I've covered a story like this where a guy encountered a woman and it was very different dynamic of things that happened. However, what I want to talk about here is actually the way that this guy handles the situation because I actually think it's a masterclass in how to communicate effectively. I'll bring you up to speed on the lore that lead to these text messages. The original poster here on Reddit is a man who has been talking to a woman for a couple of hours and then he receives these messages. Hi. <coughs> I've been thinking about you all evening and can't get you out of my mind, handsome. I know it's a little early to say this, but I have such a special feeling about you. And he goes, oh wow, that's really nice of you to say. I appreciate that so much. She says, you're welcome. While you've been away, I even told my mom and my friends about you. It truly takes a rare kind of guy for me to be able to say those things so quickly about. I feel so lucky and honored that the stars aligned to have us match when we did. You feel too good to be true, and I want you to know that. And he's blushing here like an anime character. Oh gosh, wow. Gee willikers, goodness gracious. That's super nice, thank you. Out of curiosity, what is it about me that stands out to you? So, again, they have only been talking for a couple hours in total, and she's already basically planning their wedding. She's telling all of her friends, her, her family, about this guy, despite not knowing shit about him. Prior to this, they had only talked about their pets. At least, that's what he said, mainly their pets. So this is, this is a lot to take in here. She's basically creating this Hallmark movie out of nothing. Off rip. We only started talking a couple hours ago and only shared a few texts back and forth so far. So I'm honestly just curious what caught your attention about me because that's very, very sweet of you. This may sound crazy, but call it a sixth sense if you will. I can read people like a book. And I already feel like, I already feel like you, I've known you forever. I don't know if you believe in past lives or not, but if stuff like that exists... I had a weird feeling about 30 minutes ago that we knew each other in a past life and I have to get to the bottom of where and how. Damn, that's really crazy. It really is though. Thank you for finding your way to me. And he just goes, haha, you're welcome. When asked what about him exactly drew her to feel so strongly about him so quickly, she says that it was a sixth sense. Basically, it's her superpower. She's one of the Avengers and she has the ability to find her soulmate after only communicating with them for a couple of hours. She's like a, a vibe sorceress. She's able to pick up on vibes and figure out who's got the best vibes for her and falls in love very quickly. Nothing here seems malicious and in a vacuum it's pretty sweet messages, but these are messages you'd expect from someone that you are actively dating or someone you have known for a long time and are progressing to that stage. This isn't something that you would immediately dump on someone's plate after only knowing them for a couple of hours. That's, that's a lot of food to digest there. That's, that's, that's a lot to put in your pipe and smoke here. There's, there's a lot happening way too quickly. I hope you don't think I'm crazy. I don't normally say stuff like this to guys, but there's something different here. Almost like spiritual energy. I've been, I've been waiting for my soulmate for years and kept getting led astray by the wrong people. And now I think I know why we have to meet ASAP. I'm so fucking excited to see what out energy in person is like. If it's this intense over text, I can't imagine how incredible IRL our dynamic will be. She's definitely seeing these text messages through a different lens here because I'm not picking up on any type of electric energy. I'm not getting butterflies in my tummy just reading it. I'm not getting the tingles. This is two very different levels of intensity and excitement. She's out here full of jubilation like she just won the lottery. Meanwhile, the guy's energy is the same excitement you get over finding an extra chicken nugget in your eight-piece box. Like, it's very different. But he still says, when are you free? I'd love to meet tomorrow, but I have therapy late afternoon and then work at night. So how about the day after? That would probably work. I can let you know for sure by tomorrow at some point. How about I take you to dinner? I would love that. I'm so looking forward to the first meeting in our beautiful story, handsome. Aw, oh, lol. You're so sweet. I have to go to bed now for work tomorrow morning, but let's talk more tomorrow. Absolutely. Sweet dreams, sweetheart, and you'll be in my dreams. He says, sweet dreams, I hope you have a good night's rest. The next morning rolls around and it's a totally different ball game, sports fans. Good morning. How's your morning going? She says, good morning. Fine, and yours? He Now he's the one with a lot of energy now. Great so far. You're hitting him with the Tony the Tiger? Great! Just had a meeting with my boss and got some pretty positive feedback, so I'm pretty happy about that. And she just one-words him. Gotcha. 
He immediately picks up on the uh, tonal shift here and says, Is everything okay, lol? Yeah, why do you ask? Because you're being more short than you were yesterday, which is fine. I'm just trying to see if you're okay and if you need anything. This guy seems like an actual sweetheart, but this guy seems like a fucking peach. This guy seems legitimately like a nice person. And she goes, I appreciate that. Well, to be honest, I was in my feels this morning when I woke up to no good morning text from you. That's an odd thing to expect from someone who is legitimately still a stranger to you, but even still, he apologizes, saying, Oh, I'm sorry, I woke up later and had to rush to work. As soon as I got to work, I had the meeting with my boss and then immediately texted you after the meeting was over. I'm really sorry for the misunderstanding. Yeah, it's cool. I just thought you were perfect for me and then this happens. And he's as confused as every other person on the planet would be. He says, I'm confused. Did I do something wrong? It's still pretty early in the morning. It's not like I went most or even half of the day without texting you. She then says, love is about prioritizing other person and you clearly prioritize your job and your boss over me. I'm going to let that ruminate for a moment. I'm going to let you go ahead and marinate in that text for a second. And now we'll proceed. He says, you could have sent a good morning text to me too, you know. Let's just pause there. Love is about prioritizing other person, and you clearly prioritize your job and your boss over me. Yes. As he should. You are a stranger. What do you expect him to do? March in there up to his boss, spit in his face, and be like, I quit. I'm going to go travel the world with this girl I talked to last night. We're going to go around the world in a hot air balloon, damn it. And you can't stop me anymore. I don't need this job. I'm out. What an extraordinarily selfish and downright evil thing to ask of a partner, especially one that's not even your partner. This is, again, a, a mysterious stranger to you. They haven't even met yet. I hopped on Apex Legends on stream the other night and ended up queuing with a random squad mate in three consecutive games. I knew more about that motherfucker through him just on the open mic than these two know about each other. And it's not like I'd send him a good morning text. But, like, she's making this huge issue about not receiving a good morning text in a timely enough fashion for her expectations. He still sent a good morning text, mind you, when he didn't need to, since, again, they're not dating and they really don't even know each other at all, but he still sent one. It just wasn't fast enough for her, and that, right now, is a massive problem to her. That is shocking. Why does it automatically have to be me going first? Plus, to be honest, we barely know one another. I don't think it's fair that there are already these expectations. Super reasonable from him. And he's right. If it really is a huge deal to her, she could have been the one to send the good morning text. And then he would have known and been able to respond when he could. She then says, dude, you're the man here. You're supposed to be winning my heart. That's your role. I don't want to chase someone. I deserve someone who will romance me and win me over. Waiting to text me until you get to the office shows your priorities are not what I thought they were. What the fuck? <laughs> what are you talking about? He's already won your heart over by just existing, it seems like, since you- Oh, I'm farting. Yeah, that's how much I think of that statement. I rest my case. I'll let my asshole do the talking on that one. Not much more needs to be said there. He then responds, I'm sorry, but this is crazy. We are practically strangers and you're already making demands. I do romance whoever I'm pursuing. I'm a very romantic guy. I did text you early this morning, but because it wasn't done exactly the way you think it should be, I'm a bad guy. She then goes on to explain that she doesn't think he's a bad guy, but just doesn't like that he doesn't feel the same way about her as she does to him. She then also explains that the therapist she sees is for her borderline personality disorder, and she explains how that relates to what they've been talking through. And... That made a lot of sense when I read that with the way she was acting throughout these text messages. And that is a very real struggle that I always have a lot of sympathy for. And I'm always wishing the best for people going through BPD. It's great that she's get, trying to get help through therapy. And I'm wishing the absolute best for her with that. What I want to talk about here, though, is how he handles this whole situation. Even before knowing about her BPD, which obviously he didn't since they are completely strangers to each other. He was still being very respectful and communicating effectively. He wasn't being combative or aggressive. He was being a very wholesome individual. And this is just an unfortunate set of circumstances. He responds by saying that he appreciates her sharing her vulnerability and then says, do you mind if I share something that's bothering me a little bit? And she says, yes, please do. I want to know how you feel so badly. Please open up to me. 
Well, I'm a little scared that you're already using the word love in regards to us. We are still basically strangers and have been texting for less than 24 hours. And she just says, Kay, should have known you weren't special after all. You're a normie. A basic bitch, if you will. Normies don't understand or appreciate love. They will never know what we do. He says, who is we? She says, empaths. I am an empath and feel things more strongly and deeply than regular people. Something you clearly don't appreciate and take for granted. One day someone will see my gift and cherish it. He says, I mean, I wanted to take you on a date. If it went well and we were compatible after a while, I was definitely interested in a serious committed relationship, but I do have to meet someone first to know that and hang out at, uh, hang out a bit first before I make that commitment, which again is a totally understandable thing. And she says, fuck off, bro. You're disgusting. I can't believe I ever saw something in you. You are not the one. You're just another schmuck in a long string of disappointments. Schmuck is a word I haven't heard since the Stone Ages, and I really appreciate that she dusted it off for this message. Schmuck is something that used to make me giggle every time I heard it when I was a kid. I deserve better. Fuck you. You thought I loved you, but I don't, bitch. Don't ever contact me again. We are over. I never loved you. You lost the best girl, you'll never meet someone like me again because you're a normie who can't see or identify a gym. We are not the same. Love is not a lie. You were. You're the problem. Don't contact me again, basic bitch. You repulse me. Bye, loser. It's actually very sad reading these things. Like, this isn't your normal r slash nice guy blow up moment where a dude pretends to be a nice person just to try and get laid, and when he doesn't get pussy out of it, he has a meltdown like, I didn't, you, I don't love you, you're, you're fat and ugly, and no one would ever love you, I'm the nicest guy you'll ever meet, and you just blew it with me, the alpha male, fuck you, get out of town, scram, swine. Like, this, this isn't one of those moments. It's not her fault she has BPD. But she's clearly not ready for a real relationship right now. She's going to need to continue to get help. Her having BPD doesn't make this hurt any less for the guy who just received this. He's done nothing wrong. And I actually think he is a great example of how to communicate softly, respectfully, and just being a pretty good example of like how to just be a normal person when interacting with somebody else. He also mentioned that he is still currently receiving text messages from her that continue to get scarier and more extreme, which is unfortunate to hear. It definitely sounds like she needs help with this to come up with more effective ways of dealing with her BPD. And hopefully she finds that help she needs, but I thought this was worth sharing. And yeah, that's really about it. See ya.